What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with the review for Married to Medicine. This is season eight, the reunion part two. All right, you guys. So before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel, and you're not already subscribed to the channel, then do me a favor: stop checking me out on a date and hit that subscribe button, you guys. It's free, and stop making me pay for the, di the damn dinner. But um, yeah. Without further ado, you guys, let's go ahead and talk about Married to Medicine. This part of the reunion was really deep really it went really deep so let's talk about it all right you guys so with the reunion part two we picked up where we left off you guys remember in the last um part of the reunion it was where quad had said that contessa had filed for separation from scott right and scott was backstage and scott was upset honestly i can understand why scott was upset like if scott felt that you know he and contessa hadn't really discussed these things and actually not even the fact that he and Contessa hadn't discussed these things it's the fact that you know when Andy asked Contessa had to had the D word come up divorced and she's like well you know any of the other ladies on the stage can answer that question no Contessa that was that was your chance to say you know what when it came down to me and Scott I did file for a separation from Scott but we're still currently working on our marriage you know I did that kind of similar to what Simone did with Cecil by filing for divorce. I'm hoping that that'll be a the jolt or whatever that, you know, um, Scott needs to realize we need to work on our marriage. We need to fix our marriage, right? Um, and like I said, I just don't understand why Quad had to speak up. That's, I don't understand why Quad spoke up. And, and Scott's thing is he feels that, you know, Contessa is telling quad think quad and the other ladies things that you know they have not discussed which so scott came out there right and um scott was visibly upset which i i don't know why scott was upset so um he like i said so he and contessa have talked about this he did say that he got the you know separation papers in the in the mail he says he feels like a separation is just you saying a divorce which it could be and a legal separation could just be you know like hey we need a little bit of time apart from each other to see if this is what we actually want. Um, the men did try to calm Scott down, but it, it wasn't any good when they tried to. So then the men go on stage and Scott joins, you know, joins Contessa, right? And like I said, he said that she he and Contessa, did, she did file for um, the separation. He got the papers. He said it was about a month ago. She said, no, it was about six months ago. Then they did say that they both have talked to the kids and um that when they talked to the kids it was not good right and um let's see where we at and scott is like you know he doesn't want things with his marriage to go in the direction that they went you know that scott not in scott but cecil and simone went and she's like hey, you should understandable because you know we all know simone had to file for a divorce to let um cecil know she was real about what she was feeling You know, and we'll talk about Scott a little bit more because the more you listen to Scott talk, I just feel like Scott is holding some stuff back. It's just what it's just the vibe that he gave me. It just feels like Scott is literally holding things back. And I don't know what I mean, because it just feels like Scott is not telling the complete truth about some things. And we're going to discuss it. Um, so let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So Toya, Toya asked Scott, has he been faithful in his marriage? He said, hell yeah, I've been faithful in my marriage. <sighs> how do I feel about that? Because it's, it, I mean, I don't want to say that Scott has been unfaithful in his marriage because we're, we're, we're going to talk about it. But Scott has done some questionable things. No, no doubt, Scott has done some questionable things. So, you know, Contest is like, what is the one thing that I asked for in his marriage? He says, you know, consistency. And Toya says, no, she wants counseling. She says, exactly. How does she know it? And you can't even say it. So Contessa says that, you know, when she and Scott, their fights, their arguments, everything with them has gotten very toxic and they don't want to, neither one, both of them said that neither one of them want to be in a toxic situation, which who wants to be in a, who wants to be in a, a marriage where it's toxic? And that's what I've been saying all season long. I feel like with Contessa, I feel like Contessa was doing that whole medical practice with the hopes of it helping repair their marriage. But you can't go into you can't go into a new relationship 
without fixing the old one. And I think that's what's Contessa. Honestly, when it comes to Contessa, I wanted I, this whole entire season. I've wanted Contessa to basically put her foot down with Scott because she didn't. And I just wanted Contessa to be like, Scott, we are not in a good space. Like, you can see that. You can visibly see we're not good. And we need counseling. I know you don't want to do it, but it might be the best thing to have an impartial person who doesn't know us look at listen to what you say listen to what i say and give us tips tools to work on you know sustaining a healthy and happy marriage so heavenly asked you know scott about why there's so many rumors and scott said what do you mean why there's so many rumors she he says there are, there are no rumors and she says oh yeah there are plenty of rumors scott that i've heard so then we mentioned why did layla say doc, call dr scott's girlfriend and Scott, I'm going to be honest with you, it felt like you were lying, my buddy. Because you were talking about the fact, he pulled out his phone, he said, damn, I can't say it. He said to the phone, um, call, Scott, call Scott's girlfriend, and and the phone, because I can't say the phone's name, because the phone will stop. But the phone said, um, that, do you want, do you mean call Tessa, babe? Even Heavenly was like, he just changed that shit up. He said, no, I didn't. I'm like, nah, Scott, you did change this shit up. I'm like, really, Scott? Like, I feel like Scott is just, I don't feel, do I feel that Scott might have a girlfriend? <sighs> do I feel that Scott might have a girlfriend? Do I feel if Scott has a girlfriend? I don't know. I really can't tell you guys. But I do know that there's something that Scott is just not telling. So then, you know... Scott also talks about DMs, right? Scott said he didn't know what DMs were. I'm like, really? You don't know what a DM was? A direct message? Okay. I mean, I guess if you're living in the Stone Ages or if you're someone that is 60, you know, even people in their 60s and 70s, even people older than Scott knows what a DM is. But Scott said he didn't know what a DM is, right? And the thing that I had an issue with with Scott in this situation was Scott is responding to the DMs like, oh, wow, or damn, or stuff like that. Scott, why are you responding to the DMs? You're a married man. You don't respond to those damn DMs. If females, if women are sending you photos of a breast ass, you either delete the DM. You do, No, this is what you do. You delete the DM. Actually, no, you respond, to, you respond to the DM, and I'll give you guys a response later. You respond to it, you delete it, and you block them. I'll get to the response later. Um, but yeah, let's put a pause. Um, nope, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. So they went backstage, right? And I really felt bad for Contessa because because Contessa is talking about the fact that you know she doesn't matter, her kids matter. I'm like, no, Contessa, you one thousand percent do matter, my love. Like you don't want your kids to be in an unhealthy environment, and you always hate when you see parents who stay in a loveless or toxic marriage because of the kids because the kids see that and the kids will grow up and emulate that in their relationships nine times out of ten so you don't want your kids to go through that whole situation so you 1000 percent matter so that's why it matters that you and sky get on the same page with each other and fix the relationship that is important in this situation that you and scott fix the relationship period point blank you don't want to tolerate each other just for the kids because the kids can see that and feed off of that energy. But I'm going to move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Next up, let's talk about Jackie and Simone. So we talked about Jackie and Simone's relationship, right? And we watched the package of them. And after the package, Jackie was crying, right? So so Andy asked them, you know, where are they in their relationship? And Simone says that, you know, Jackie and I right now, we're in a good place with each other. We are once again studying with each other. And, you know, she says that she still loves Jackie, right? So then they talk about Michael's graduation. And Simone was like, well, you know, with Michael's graduation, we just invited close friends and family. So Andy said, but you invited Anila. She says, yeah, Anila was the only person that was there that was not close friends, you know, close family or friends, right? And then he said, then, then ja Jackie says, you know, that was the one thing that bothered me the most was the fact that Anila was there. Because, like I said, we all, like I just said, Anila's not close friends or family, right? 
So then Andy, you know, looks over to Heavenly, ask Heavenly how to she, you know, ask Heavenly a question, right? And Heavenly calls bullshit on both Jackie and 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 um Simone, right? Because their friendship is not as strong as it once was before. And I mean, even even with friends who've been even with me and my best friend, like I've told you guys, my best friend and I, we've had some we've had our issue we've had We've had issues with each other where we fell out with each other and when we got back to being friends, it was it was kind of uncomfortable at first. It was uncomfortable at first, but then, you know, we eventually got back to where we were before. And then even with this latest situation, it's taken us a while to get back to where we were because of how I felt, not because of my best friend, it's just because of how I felt and it was it wasn't anything to do with her. I put, you know, I'm like, you know what? That's my friend of 16 years. I was like, you know, I put my friendship on a back burner for her. But now we're back. We're, I mean, we never stopped being best friends. We're still friends. And our relationship is still the same. It's, it was just, you know, a little... It just we had it just had a little bit of a hiccup. And then, Quad, you know, Andy was like, well, you know, Quad said something on Watch What Happens Live. And Quad said that she feels that Simone and Jackie are faking making up for the cameras. And Simone was like, absolutely not. Like, I don't get paid to do no shit like that. Like, I don't get paid to come here and make up make up with people. Now, maybe you have, but I haven't. And Kwai was like, oh, no, I haven't either. And Simone says, when it came down to me and Jackie, I came to Jackie from a genuine spot. Like, I wanted to work on this. And she says, the reason why Jackie and I are not like we once were before is because there are some, you know, some tough topics that we just have not had the, con- had the conversation about, but we'll bring our relationship expert in on this. And he said, he said, are you talking about heaven- heavenly? She says, yes, I'm talking about, he- I'm heavenly. And, and like I just said, you know, any, any, any relationship, if you want to, if friendships, you know, marriages, any relationship, when you go through your ebbs and flows, you have to work through it. And you have to have the difficult conversations. And I think for them, the difficult conversation, which I still don't get it. Jackie is still talking about the stuff from last season with Buffy, right? And Jackie's thing is she feels that, well, I, you know what? I guess I can't see it. Because Simone said, you know, Jackie, I had a conversation with you off camera. No microphone, no cameras, no nothing. It was just me and you. So Jackie's thing is she feels that when it comes down to Simone, that Simone has... You know, she'll she'll defend Toya to the women, but she didn't feel that, you know, she was defended that Jack that Simone defended her with Buffy. I'm like, are we still talking about Buffy for real? Like, OK, but I, I, I feel like Simone and Jackie can get back to where they once were. It's just going like like Simone said, we just have to have the difficult conversations that needs to be had. But that's it for them. And let's move on over you guys, because I got a lot to say on this next with the segment all right so we're gonna wrap it up with the men right so the men are on stage with andy and you know andy asked them you know what are the top three things in a marriage and and, you know cecil says your wife is right your wife is right your wife is right and you know eugene's like and you're always wrong so then they so andy asked the question of is it okay to have photo you know photos of other women in your phone this guy said i didn't have a photo of a woman in my phone he said it was in the dm that's no better, Scott. <laughs> That's no better. Why do you still have the DM of the woman sending you a photo of her? That's no. That's the equi- That's the equivalent. Because if you, even if you didn't have it in your camera roll, you can still go to Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, wherever, and look at that photo of her and do whatever you wanted to do with it. If you wanted to masturbate to it, you could do that. So that's an issue, Scott. I don't care if it's in your DM or if it's in your text messages. Or in your camera roll, you still should not have a photo of the woman in your in your phone. So then Andy says, "Well, what is the res- what is the best response to people in your DMs?" And Eugene gave the best response that I thought. Exactly, gave the best response. Eugene says the best response actually is no response. That's right, no response. But if you do if you do feel the need to respond, respond by saying, "You know, I am a married man." I do not appreciate you. That is very disrespectful of my marriage to send me pictures in my DMs. And then you follow up with deleting that damn thread and blocking that person. Now, Lurch, on the other hand, Lurch f- 
scripture says that, you know, oh, you shouldn't block them. You should not block them. You don't, you shouldn't block anybody. Yes, you should. If someone came and disrespect, well, you know what? Maybe you wouldn't. Because, I mean, we saw you go through a whole fucking airport with another woman. So maybe you wouldn't block the woman. But, but you know, the message that they checked, Scott, about all of that, right? But, and then Lurch, then Lurch says, you don't block them immediately. Yes, you do. Do what you, listen to Eugene. Eugene said it best. Best response, no response. So if you don't respond to the person, block them. Delete the thread. Get rid of it. If you do feel the need to respond to them, let them know that it is disrespectful. And then what you can do on top of that is, no, whatever social media it is, if it's Twitter, if it's Instagram, if it's Snapchat, you make a post and say, hey, to any woman that is following me, I want to let make this plain and clear to you, ladies. I am a married man. Please do not disrespect me or my wife by sending me inappropriate pictures in my DMs. If you do send me an inappropriate picture and it's in my DMs, I will block you and I will delete you. Period. End of discussion. That is a blanket statement to everyone. So everyone knows what's what. So then we move over to the conversation about Scott and his um, life coach. I was with Andy when they when they finally explained it. They said it made sense. What Scott explained it made sense. I'm like, who did that make sense to? So Scott says that, you know, when Contessa was talking about her life coach, you guys remember he told her that he had a life coach that he had been seeing for months, right? So Scott said that he, the reason that he told Contessa that was he was being petty and getting, and, and, and you know, he, was, he, he made it up. He was being petty. I'm like, who did that make sense to? What dumbass did that make sense to? That made no sense to me. So you mad because your wife got a life coach and you're going to sit here and tell her you got a life coach that you've been seeing for months, you've never paid. I mean, you really went, I mean, you really went far with that one. You really went far. But okay, if you if, if y'all said it, it made sense to y'all, it didn't make sense to me. And that's where we ended the reunion at. Um, so next week is part three of the reunion. I still don't know why we needed two parts of this reunion, but that's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Um, leave your comments. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else and share this video. Until the next one, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear a mask or not. Socially distance. Be blessed, you guys, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye, guys.